Thank you, praise team. I want to thank uh, Sharon for stepping in with our for our minister of music, Maria. I thank you once again for coming. I, I wanted to tell you right now because typically I I, I uh, always forget about it, but thank you for stepping in for us. Today, today is a day that the Lord has made. Of course, we should be thankful and be proud of it. Peace Baptist, I know it's been said, uh, and, and before I, I release people for uh, Children's Church, I do want to get some things out. I know, I just want to say, I am just so blessed to be the pastor of this church. Things that we did yesterday, and I know a lot of us are not here today because of the work that was put out yesterday, it was the it was just a tremendous day. For all you guys who don't know me, I know I see some new faces. Um, I'm Pastor Tom Brain from Peace Baptist Church, and once again, I am so blessed to be a part of this church. We did a miraculous thing yesterday in being a servant to this community with our third annual health fair. And I tell you, when I looked up and saw all the people who just volunteered, I mean, I think we have probably 50 volunteers just from Peace Baptist Church and doing everything. I'm talking from the, when I got here, of course, I was late. I was around 10 o'clock. There's people here at 8 o'clock, you know, doing the setup and, you know, the registration, the um, doing the uh, uh, murals on the ground and putting up the, uh, just everything, uh, hospitality room and, and when, we, we were close to um, having the um, uh, health fair. I was looking around. I saw all these vendors. We had over 60 vendors. And I see all these volunteers. I was like, are we going to have people come? And I, you know, I look up, and Dietra, you were one of the main attractions, the food. I was, every time I walked past that line, I wanted to get meatballs or chicken. And I'm like, her customer service must be horrible because the line never moved, but it was different people. She was a main attraction, and, and just, just the whole atmosphere, I saw people just coming to me. But I want to thank all those people who just, just did all this work. And I know I can't thank everyone, but I know there must have been so many people working and helping because when I was being attacked by who they? And that cat choked me, threw me on the ground, and no one came and helped me. I know there's some pastors that have armor bears and people, don't mess with my pastor. No one came and helped me. And I know Tony's not here, but Tony Bates is, is uh, you know, he's my boy. You know, he backs me up. So I saw him. I said, Tony, I said, man, who they attacked me? So I'm thinking... Tony's going to say, come on, man, you know, let's go, to, go get him. He said, I saw it. I'm like, so if, if you're listening, Tony, you're fired. You're a horrible armor bearer. You know, but I know people must have been doing a lot of things. But you know what? I cannot thank everyone, but I do want to thank three people. And I want them to stand up. I know one of them's not here, Sheree Lee. I want to thank Diane Orr. And made a session. If you guys can stand. <clears throat> and the reason why I say that, because they put in many, many hours, many, many days, many, many weeks, and I, I, I mean many, many months. They did all that planning behind the scenes. I know there was a core committee. I know Kim was on it. Horace was on it. Uh, Deisha was on it. Uh, Chuck was on it. But when I was coming down to the office, I would see them, and they were doing all this planning behind the scenes. I want you to know that I saw you, but you know what? More importantly, God saw you. You made God look good. And there were people, and I know y'all did a, 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 it was a heavenly thing because when I was walking around and these vendors, it was like they, they already knew me because I know Cherie's been calling them and and, and I guess you put my picture in the pamphlet, which I didn't want. But these vendors already knew me. And I know that we reached out and we really did something for the community. And I, I just want to thank you all. 
Uh, and I can't wait to see to be in the briefing meeting, the debriefing meeting on, on what successes we had, uh, how many people were actually walked through, and where God's going to lead us next year if, we, if, we, uh, decide, if he decides to allow us to do it next year. So I want to thank, uh, thank those three specifically. Um, so thank you once again. At this time, uh, we are having children's church. So if uh, the children can follow, I think Maida, Jacob, Hannah, uh, if you guys can go back to the vestibule and we can um, train up the, the children the way that they should go. So I know I haven't been in front of you in, what, four weeks? So uh, I'm just so happy to be back in front of this podium again. And I just want to get to it. You know, I've been gone for a while. I want us to just get to uh, this sermon that God has put on my heart. But first, let's go to him in prayer. Uh, Dear Heavenly Father, dear Father, we thank you. We thank you for your hands that's been over us, Father. We thank you for the promises that you have given us, Father. Father, we thank you for, for uh, just giving us this light that we have with your son, Jesus Christ, Father. Father, I pray that, that, that this word that you, you have given me is a word that's going to allow people to walk out of here transformed and not be afraid and not be fearful of the things that are around them and things that are, 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 are happening to them, Father. I pray that you allow them just to keep moving, keep on, keeping on, Father. That, that we know that there's victory because your son has already had victory, Father. Therefore, we have the victory. Father, be with me as I preach this word. Allow the angst and the worries to uh, uh, be released out of me. And, when they, and the words that are given to me is words that they hear from you, Father. And it's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to be coming out of you in a familiar uh, 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 text. And it's Isaiah chapter 41, verses 10 through 13. Isaiah chapter 41, verses 10 through 14. And if you can all stand, once you get to Isaiah chapter 1, it's in the Old Testament, uh, verses 10 through 13. And it reads as follows. It says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed of disgrace. They shall be as nothing, and those who strive with with you shall perish. You shall seek them and not find them. Those who contended with you, those who war against you, shall be as nothing, as a non-existent thing. For I... The Lord your God will hold your right hand, saying to you, fear not, I will help you. Amen. May God bless the readers, the hearers, and the doers, the doers of his word. The title of this sermon today, the title of this sermon is Keep On Keeping On. Keep On Keeping On is the title. But there's a question that I really want you to meditate on. And that question is, how can a believer overcome fear? How can you as a believer overcome? overcome the fear. And we know this fear is all around us. You know, you, you, you might hear people say, you know, I'm afraid of this. Or I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of the doctor's uh, uh, report that's going to come out. I'm afraid that I can't pay the, the bills at the end of the month. I'm afraid that my relationship with my spouse is not where it needs to be. I'm afraid that my child is going down the wrong path. I'm afraid. And, and we know that people, they get so surrounded by this fear. And if you're surrounded by this fear and not by faith, this fear is going to become your reality. You're going to have these negative thoughts that are going to take you down a path that you don't want to go. And we know fear is the opposite of, of faith. There's a difference between fear and faith. You see, faith is believing without seeing the, the results. But when you have fear in your life, you see, fear is worrying, worrying about the things that are going to happen to you. And you're looking at those circumstances. That's what fear does. You see, fear is this uh, 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 feeling that, it, it, that causes you to um, have a threat of pain or a threat of, 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 of anxiety, a, a threat of harm that's going to come to you. Fear 
it de- de- decapitates you. It, it, it stops you in your, in your tracks. It, it, it paralyzes you. That's what this fear does. This fear is, is allowing you to focus on a situation, allowing you to focus on a problem, allowing you to focus on the circumstances that you're in. That's what fear does. And, and I'm here to tell you that don't you know you have a God that is bigger than your problems? Don't you know that you have a God that is bigger than your circumstances? Don't you know you have a God that's bigger than the situation that you're in? You see, while you're focusing on the problem that you're in, we have a God that is the peace in that storm. You see, we, have a, we serve a God that is that rock that is in that weary land that you're walking in. You see, we serve a God that is that bridge that's over that troubled water that you're in. See, we have a God that is the way out, out of the no way that, that, that is right in front of you. See, we have a God that is that solid foundation that is, that, that, that's around all the sandy and the, and, the, and the slippery sand that's around you. See, God is bigger than your circumstances. That's the kind of God that we have. And we're in Isaiah chapter 10, I mean, Isaiah, Isaiah 41 verse 10, where God says, he says, fear not. And he, give, he says, do not be dismayed. He gives us two commands. He said, I want you to fear not, and I want you to not be dismayed. And we as, uh, uh, as people, especially brothers and sisters, we know that if someone's going to tell us to do something, we want to know who they are. You see, if a police officer tells us to do something, we're going to do it because they're the cops. And there's consequences for not doing what they tell us to do. We're going to do what our parents tell us because there's consequences. There's an iron cord or there's punishment that, that we're going to do. We're going to do what our teachers tell us to do because there's consequences. And God, he did not ask them or ask us to fear not. He did not come and uh, 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 describe fear not. It's a command. He says, fear not. As a matter of fact, there's 365 uh, uh, verses in the Bible that God tells us to not be afraid or to fear not or to do not be dismayed or to have uh, 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 courage. He tells us that. So that's important. God is letting us know that, you know what? I know that you are focused on this fear. So I'm going to give you a verse for every day of the year to tell you do not fear. And, and, and once again, if God gives a command, he's doing it for a reason. So he tells us not to fear, but yet we still fear. He tells us do not worry. Do not, do not be dismayed means to worry about something that, that, that is full of fear. So he tells us this. So why do we fear? Now, Isaiah chapter 41, see, before God tells the, uh, the, uh, um, the uh, 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 nation of Israel, I mean, uh, uh, um, um, Israel this, he already tells them, in the first nine verses, why you should uh, obey the command that I've given you. He already tells them who he is. You know, but, but we're in uh, verse 10 where he says, do not fear, do not be dismayed. But if you go back to verse 1, God gives us a glimpse of who he is. God gives us a glimpse of his, of, of, of his greatness. In verse 1, he says that he's the judge of all the earth. He said from coast to coast. I am the judge. I'm going to judge you. You see, God does not have to take account or give account for anything that he says or does. We don't, we don't go, and God doesn't go into our court, courtroom. We go to his courtroom. We are all going to be judged. If you're a non-believer, you're going to be judged in front of the white, white throne. If you're a believer, you're going to be judged in the front of the beaming seat of Christ, where God's going to give you your rewards and let you see the rewards that you didn't get. So he tells us in verse 1, I am the judge of the earth. Then if you read verse 2 and 3, God says, I'm the ruler of all rulers. I'm the, he said that these kings don't, can't do anything without me. And we know that God is the Lord of Lords. We know God is the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace. We know that God is the risen King and he's the uh, soon to come King. God tells them that not only am I the judge over the earth, but I am also the ruler of all rulers. He's giving you a glimpse of who he is, why he says, do not fear. Then if you go to verse 4, verse, verse 4, God says that I am the first 
and I am the last. Basically, what God is saying is that he says that he is the, he is the uncreated first. There was no was before there was before there was. God was before anything. God is saying that, look, I am the beginning and the end. I'm the first and the last. I'm the alpha and the omega. I am the who was, the who is, the who to come. God says, look, there was nothing before me, and, and there, will be, there will be nothing after me. So he's giving you a glimpse of who he is, why he can say, do not fear. And then he goes on in verse uh, 89. 89, he says, I'm the God that chose you to be part of my family. See, he, see, God, he chose us before the foundation of the earth. God is saying, look, I can command you not to fear because you are a chosen people. I chose you to be part of this family. God is telling us, do you know who you are? And also, do you know whose you are? Because he's saying, look, I chose you. He said, you are a child of mine. He said, you are a chosen people. He said, you are a royal priesthood. He said, you are a possession of my son, Jesus Christ. He said, you are a co-heir to this kingdom. So God gave us glimpse of who he is. He said that I am the judge of the earth. I am the ruler of rulers. I am the, the, the uh, uncreated first. And I chose you to be part of this family. Now, do not fear. He said, do not fear. And we know... How can we keep on keeping on? How can a believer overcome fear? A remedy to overcome fear is to trust in our creator. We got to trust in him. The word tells us, trust in God with all your heart. And he'll direct your path. We got to trust that God is sovereign. Trust that God is omnipotent. Trust that God's the way maker. Trust that God is, 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 um, is, is the everlasting father. We have to trust that. And this is what God is trying to, God is not trying to tell us, he's telling us this. And we know that, that God, we should never, and I I learned this from, from Emma. I wish Emma was here today, but a few uh, months ago, probably last year, uh, we were in Bible study and Emma brought up that um, we should stop saying that God is a man that would never lie. You know, we should call God who he is. God told us, he gave us command that, I, that you should not fear. And you should not be dismayed. And he gave us a glimpse of who he is. We should call God out on who he is. We know instead of us saying that he's a man that would never lie, we should say that God is a promise keeper. He keeps promises. We already know that he doesn't change, but we know that he's a promise keeper. And we know that we should, if we, if we look at God in that light, that he's a promise keeper, that he keeps his promises, then we'll go and say, okay, God, what are your promises? We know that God promises that he will hear our prayers, like we said this morning. We know that God promises that he'll give us everlasting life. We know that God promises that we can cast our burdens up to him and he'll take care of it. We know God promises that, that, that all, all good things come to those who, are, who, who love him. We know God promises that, that he will always be there with us. So God is a promise keeper. He does not renege on, on any, any of his promises. So you should know who God is. He's giving you a glimpse of who he is. And even in these next four verses, 10 through 13, God gave us these two commands. Don't fear. Do not be dismayed. And he, and he wants us to look at those promises. There's, there's thousands of promises that are in the Bible. But he's telling us to look at these three promises, three promises in these four verses. The first promise is he promises his presence. Then he's going to promise us his protection. Then he's going to promise us his provision. He's a promise keeper. So he says, look, do not fear. That first promise all comes out of verse 10. Verse 10, I'm telling you, a lot of people know this verse, but... Many people look at this verse maybe as a bumper sticker uh, bulletin. Or many people look at it as just a, 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 a good saying, nice saying, or motivational saying. You know, this verse, verse 10 of Isaiah 41, is a verse that God shows us that I am going to give you my presence. He gives you five reasons why, or five ways in which he's going to be in present with you. He says that he's going to be with you. He's going to be your God. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to help you. He's going to upload, I mean, he's going to uphold you. God is trying to tell you, you cannot escape 
my presence. I'm going to be not next to you. I'm going to be over you. I'm going to be inside of you. I'm going to be around you. And I'm going to be under you. He spells it out in verse 10. If you look at the first promise, he says, do not fear, for I am with you. He's telling us that he'll never leave us or forsake us. He's telling us that I'm going to be with you all the way, like when you're going through that 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 that, that, um, that health issue, he says, "I'm going to be with you all the way." He says, "When you uh, uh, lost your job, I'm going to be with you all the way." He says that when you are having problems in your, with your family, he said, "I'm going to be with you all the way, no matter what dark valley situation you are in." God says, I'm going to be with you. We already know Psalms 23, 4. It says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because he is with you. He said, I'm going to be with you. This is the God that we serve. That he's always going to be with you. And if you are feeling fearful, if you're wallowing in fear, you must not know that Jesus is with you. So that's how God is next to you. Now he says, he goes on and says in verse 10, we're still in verse 10. He says, do not be dismayed for I am your God. You see, I'm convinced that if we, if I said, I'm convinced that when we realize how big and powerful God is, when we realize how true and trustworthy God is. When we realize how faithful and loving God is, we will not fear. We will not fear anything or anyone. God said, I am your God. Even though he doesn't give us the answer, we don't need an answer because God said, I'm going to give you myself. He said, I am your God. I'm bigger than your problems. I'm going to give you me. So whatever situation you're going in, you got me. So he already told us he's going to be next to us when he says, I'm with you. Now he says, I'm going to be over you because I am your God. I'm bigger than anything that can come your way. And then he goes on and says, I'm going to strengthen you. So he says, I'm with you. I am your God. And now he says, I will strengthen you. See, this is where God is saying, I am going to be inside of you. You see, he, he says, he says that, you know, I'm that's in you is greater than, than he that's in the world. He said, he said that uh, um, uh, no matter what you go through, because we know that when we're going through these situations, these circumstances, these problems, that we feel weak, that we get weak. And we're like, man, you know, I, I cannot go on. And how many of you have ever felt that you cannot go on, that, that, that this situation is so, so, so paralyzing you cannot go on. And that's why the word, I mean, it's so great that we have this word that tells us. Teacher, can you get the, get the mic? Uh, there's this word that tells us that, that we can do all things in Christ that strengthens us. We cannot do it on our own. We know we cannot do it on our own. We know the weak, that, that you know, we are weak. Paul, who wrote 44% of the New Testament, he was weak. Paul even said, now look. He said, take this affliction away from me. Take this pain, this thorns in my side away from me. What did Jesus say? Jesus did not take it away from him. Jesus said, look, my grace is sufficient for you. In your weakness, I will be made strong. You see, whenever we are going through this weak situation, God says, look, I, you can't escape my presence. I'm not going to even come next to you or over or, or even over you. I'm going to come inside of you. I'm going to have to, I'm going to put the Holy Spirit inside of you to give you the strength to overcome what you are going through. See, you cannot escape the presence of God. So he says, look, I'm going to be with you, which means I'm going to be next to you. I'm going to be your God, which means I'm going to be over you. He says, I'm going to be inside of you, which means that I'm going to strengthen you. But then he goes on and says, I'm going to help you. Man, aren't you glad that you have a God that after he says, I'm going to be with you, that he says, I'm going to help you. And we know in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6, you know, he says that, you know, he, he says that I will never leave you or forsake you. Then he goes on in verse 6 and says, so you can boldly be and be confident and say that the Lord is my helper. I will not fear 
Who can, no, no man can do anything against me. God says, look, I am going to help you no matter what you do. No matter if you sin, I'm going to help you. No matter if you lie, I'm going to help you. No matter if you're stressed, I'm going to help you. But we have friends today that will block us if we say the wrong thing to them. That will unfriend us if we don't do what, we want, uh, what, uh, what they want us to do. They'll, they'll click left. So God is saying, look, I don't care what you do. I'm going to help you. I'm never going to unfriend you. He said, look, I am all around you. So no matter what you go through, you, you know that God, God, his presence, his presence is that he's next to you, that he's over you, that he's inside of you, and he's around you. And finally, finally he says that, that he says in verse 10, God says, I will uphold you with my right hand, my righteous right hand. So God got you covered. He got you covered next. He got you covered above. He got you covered inside. He got you covered around. And now he said, I got you covered from underneath. Because when he said uphold, it means to lift up. So God is saying, look, I got you in my right hand. We know the word tells us that nothing can pluck us out of God's hands. He says, look, I got you. God is all around you. He's promising us his presence. That's why when he says, do not fear, do not be dismayed, we know that his promise of his presence is all around us, is in us, is over us, is next to us, is under us. We know that God, he is a promise keeper. So now we go to verse 11 and 12. 11 12, God says, look. Well, first in 10, he says, he promises us his presence. Now in 11 and 12, he promises us his protection. 11 12 says, behold. All those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed of disgrace. They shall be as nothing. And those who strive with you shall perish. He said, you shall seek them and not find them. Those who contended with you, those, uh, those who war against you shall be as nothing, as non-existent things. One thing I know about God is God is specific. There's no ambiguity, ambigu- whatever that word <laughs> with God. <laughs> God is specific. He is telling you specific promises for a specific result. He's giving you specific conflicts that 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 that, that has specific results. He's saying that if people, and we know that people that don't like us, you go to go to your job. You might have a boss that's causing you all kind of problems. Your friends, your family, you have family members. In church, you have some people that might not like the blessings that you're getting. Why are you getting blessed? Why didn't that cancer affect you? Why are you, why do you have a nice house, a nice car? They don't care about the blessings that you have. They'll talk about you behind your back. You know, and your face are all cool. But they'll talk about you behind your back. You know, and then you're wondering, man, and, and, or they're saying, why do he, they deserve that? We don't deserve a darn thing. That's called grace. Because grace is unmerited favor. And I'm glad that God gives me favor that I don't deserve. But we have people um, amongst us. And God said, look, he said, these people who are talking about you, these people who are giving you these side looks, he said, it says in verse 11, he said that they will be ashamed and disgraced and they'll be as nothing. And there's a picture of that. Re- remember when you're walking down that valley of the shadow of death and you say, I fear no evil because God is with me. And you say that, you know, his rod and his staff, that they come from me. You know, God, God is so gangster. God is like, look, I know those people around you that, that don't care about you. He said, look. While you're going through that dark situation, I'm going to plop this table down right in front of your enemies. Like he said, they'll be ashamed. They'll be dismissed. Then you'll be able to eat right in front of them. And you'll be all eating, all getting, getting fat. And they're like, what? I can't even touch them. Yeah, I want a piece of that steak. But God, God says, look, I am going to, I'm going to allow these people to see the grace that I've given you. And they won't be able to touch you. 
And then they're going to be looking all humiliated and all shamed. This is the way our God works. God says that, God, God, if you are his child, he is going to protect you. He puts a, a CIA special service, a special security uh, force around you. That's the way our God works. But, but, but we know, we, uh, we all know that our, our troubles, our enemies are not always flesh and blood. We know that we fight against the, uh, the wiles of the devil, right? We know we fight against principalities, right? We know we fight against the, the, uh, the darkness of, of, of this age, right? We know that we fight against these spirits of this wickedness, of the wickedness in, in the heavenly places. We know that there's some forces, Satan, that we are fighting against. And not only is God, God is so, God is so, so powerful, God is so mighty, God is so gangster. He says, look, I am going to protect you from the flesh and blood, but also I'm going to, I'm going to protect you from all these, these, these wiles of the devil. And he said, I know you can't do it by yourself. He said, I'm going to equip you. And what he does, what does he equip you with? He equip you with his armor. He equipped you with all the armor that you need to put on the whole armor of God. That God said, look, I'm gonna, I already told you that, that I'm going to promise you my presence. I'm all around you. I'm over you. I'm inside of you. I'm, I'm, I'm above you. I'm under you. But he says, look, I'm going to give you this armor that this devil, this Satan, this enemy is not going to be able to penetrate. He said, when, you, when the enemy starts putting thoughts in your mind, these crazy things in your mind, he said, I'm going to tell you, put on this helmet of salvation so you can block all the things that's coming in your mind. He said, when the enemy comes and tries to tempt you to fall into sin, he said, I'm going to give you this breastplate of righteousness so you can uh, uh, not fall into the sin. And then when, uh, when the enemy tries to change your foundation, tries to change, change what is the truth, he said, I'm going to give you this belt that's going to hold up that breastplate, that's going to hold up that, that helmet of foundation. He said, and then he said, look, he said, the enemy is going to come to you and they're going to put all these things on you to not allow you to go forward, to not allow you to go share what your testimony is. He said, look, I'm going to have you strap on those shoes of the gospel. He said, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the shoes of the gospel so you can walk out there, walk on this firm ground I already put in front of you. So then God said, look, he said, the enemy is going to try to shoot these daggers. And I already told you that no weapon for and against you shall prosper. He said, I'm going to give you the shield. The shield of the faith. So you know what the faith is. So now you have all this, all this uh, uh, armor. And the, those four pieces of armor I told you were all defensive armor. The helmet of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness. The belt of truth. He said the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the shoes of the gospel. And also the shield. Those five pieces of armor are all defensive. But God said, look, I'm not going to let you just have the enemy come at you. He said, I'm going to give you one more piece of armor that's going to make you go on the attack. So you can attack this devil, attack this, this, this evil person. He said, I'm going to give you this sword, this sword, which is the word of God. He said, this sword of the word that when the devil comes at you with any type of problems, any type of situations, he said, I'm going to give you this word, this sword of truth, so you can attack him. You see, we are not passive members of this army. He said, we are, we are aggressive. And God gave, gave us this sword that we can go attack the wiles of the devil. So that's the kind of God that we serve, that he promises his presence, and also he promises us his protection. And then finally, in verse 13, 13, he promises Promises us his provision. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yes. He says, For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Jehovah Jireh, he promises us provision. But when I looked at this verse, how God, man, he, I know with me, I'm kind of slow. And God has to tell me things, you know, multiple times so I can get it. And I looked at verse 13, I'm like, verse 13 sounds like verse 10. You know, because if you put verse 10 and 13 together, you know, both of them tell us to fear not. 
right? Both, excuse me, both of them tell us that God is our God, right? Verse 10 and verse uh, 13. Both of, us t- both of them tell us that he will hold us up. He will hold us up. And both of them refer to God's right hand. They refer to God right hand. He, he's going back and so he, he's telling us, look, I'm going to promise you. But he says, and, and, and also both of them tell us that he will help us, right? Yeah, he said, I will help you. So God repeated himself in verse 13. But then when I look at it, I'm like, well, you know what? In verse 10, I looked at it, I tried to look at this picture, paint this picture of God. You know how God, we know that he says that he'll hold us in his right hand. And that right hand of God is power, righteousness, that right hand of righteousness. That, you know, he's going to uh, uh, defeat or ward out any enemy, any weapon coming against us. But then in this verse, he says that I'm going to, uh, 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 he, he said, um, he said the, the Lord God, God, God will hold you, will hold your right hand. So if he's going to hold our right hand, our right hand, the person who's holding our hand has to hold it with their left hand. Okay? So God is holding us. He said, I'm going to hold your right hand. And verse 13, he says, I'm going to lift you up with, with my right hand. So God is saying, look, I'm going to take your right hand and put it in my left hand. And then I look at a picture. I started thinking about TJ and Jacob and Ocean and Zen. I'm like, okay, as their father and grandfather, if if, if, if they're going through something, I'm going to have my left hand holding their right hand, and I'm going to use my right hand to ward off all those things that are going to them, and I'm going to have them face me, and they're, they're looking at me knowing that I'm going to protect them, and when we are going through these problems, we can look at God. He has us in his left hand. He's warding off all these problems in and, and his right hand, and he's looking us face to face, and we're seeing that God, he, because he's so powerful, because he's ever ever present that he's going to take care of us that's a parent and child illustration because we know as a parent we'll do anything and everything that we can to make sure our kids don't go don't go down that rocky road that's the same way with God even though we do go God said look I'm your father you are my son you are my daughter he said I got you I'm gonna hold you and he wanted us to repeat he said look do not fear he said I'm gonna hold you I'm going to help you. He said, I am your God. I'm your daddy. You don't have to worry about anything. And that's how we can keep on keeping on. As a a believer, you can overcome the fear that is put in your way. Because we know that that God, he's going to provide a way. God's going to be present with us. God's going to protect us. But if you don't believe that, if you don't believe that, you need to follow the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You need to follow his example on how he kept on keeping on. Yeah. You know, Jesus was in a safe place. Jesus was in heaven. He was on the throne. And he saw how, how this world was full of sin and how there was a separation between us and, and God. And Jesus, he stepped off that zone, throne through the, through, the, uh, uh, through, uh, through the guidance of his father because he followed, he followed the commands of his father. He came down here. And Jesus had all, all matches. He was in all matches. He came down here, left the throne, and put on this flesh and, and put, put on his blood just for you and me. But Jesus, he, did, he is our high priest. He basically went through everything that we're going to go through. But we know Jesus was sinless. He did not sin, but he went through everything. Jesus uh, 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 um, uh, uh, was affected. I'm sorry, he wasn't affected, but Jesus, he was tempted by the devil but he kept on keeping on right jesus he was he um jesus uh uh, uh um jesus uh i'm sorry was homeless he said that i did not have a place to lay my head but what he kept on keeping on jesus he was 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 like what Bridget said at the end of the month he didn't have enough food jesus had all these people following him and he didn't have enough food but he kept on keeping on. And Jesus, he was, he was uh, uh, surrounded by an angry mob. But what did he do? He kept on keeping on. Jesus, he even had the, the, the religious leaders. He went to church. The church people did not accept him. What did he do? He kept on keeping on. Jesus, 
even had his best friend, his, his homeboys, betray him. But he kept on keeping on. Jesus had his, 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 one of his favorites, you know, Peter, who denied him. But what did he do? He kept on keeping on. And Jesus, because he had all power, and because he, he, he uh, said, you know what, I am not going to fear. My father said, do not fear. I'm not going to fear. Jesus could have just stopped all those people coming after him. He could have brought down 12 legions of angels to come and protect him. But Jesus said, look, I got to do what my father said. He said, go and go to this cross. I'm going to do it. Do not fear. I'm going to do it. And Jesus let them take him to that court. Jesus let them beat him up. Jesus let them put a crown of thorns on his head. Jesus let them have him carry his own cross. Jesus let them pierce him in his hands and pierce him in his feet. Jesus let them pierce him also in his side. Jesus let them ridicule him while he was dying on the cross. Jesus let him do that. But what did he do? He kept on keeping on. Even when he died, when he said, it is finished, God. He knew it was finished, but he said, I'm going to keep on keeping on. And Jesus and, and, and everyone was crying, and they knew it was a Friday. But I preached on this how we can't stay on Friday because Sunday's the coming. You see, when you keep on keeping on, you know Sunday's the coming. Jesus died. They put him in that grave. But we know that three days later, what? He rose again with all power that he had before he went to the grave. He had all power that he not only conquered a, 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 a crucifixion, he conquered death, he conquered the grave, and now he is alive. Because that's, that's, the, that's the testimony that we have. That's the example that we have. We have a Lord and Savior that we worship, that he keeps on keeping on. We can't let fear destroy us. We can't let fear stop us. We can't let fear decapitate us. We got to keep on keeping on. And the way you keep on keeping on is that you trust that God, he's a promise keeper. He promises us his presence. He promises his power. He promises his protection. He promises provision. That's how you as a believer can keep on keeping on. And you're going to go through some trials. You're going to go through some tribulations. But we keep on keeping on. You are going to be attacked by the devil. You're going to be attacked by people. But what? You keep on keeping on. You, things are not going to go your way. Death is going to be experienced. Your health is going to be experienced. But we what? We keep on keeping on. As a believer, you should always, always know that you are an overcomer. God says that you are more than a conqueror. He gives you everything you need. He surrounds you from the top to the bottom to the side, inside, all around you. You can keep on keeping on because you have a Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has all power and he has risen. He is alive. But there's some people in here who are not going to overcome their fear. They can't overcome their fear. They won't overcome their fear because they don't know Jesus Christ. There's no way you can overcome your fear without God, without Jesus. There's no way. In order for you to keep on keeping on, you have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You have to repent from your sins and accept him. And if you're sitting here and you have not made that choice, you have not changed your life, this is your opportunity to be that overcomer, to be more than a conqueror, to be able to put on the armor of God, because you are not going to be able to put on the armor of God if you are not a child of God. So if you're sitting here and you're wrestling, wrestling, and th that's God, that's Jesus coming to you. Because as a sinner, you don't want to go to him. He comes to you. He draws himself to you. So if that's you, we have elders, we have ministers, we have deacons that are standing around that they can come to you. And help walk you through that path of salvation. That yes, we are all sinners. No one's righteous. We all fall short of God's glory. Yes, we, when we were still sinners, Jesus came for us. He demonstrated that love for us. That all we have to do is confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in our heart that he rose again on that third day. And it doesn't stop there. Because when you make that commitment, you have to repent of your sins. Because you are a changed person. And if you want that change, if you want to be an overcomer, if you want to keep on keeping on, this is your opportunity. Is there anyone? 
Is there anyone? If there's anyone that is a believer, you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you just need prayer. You need someone to pray for you. Because, look, it gets tough. Times are tough. We already know that. And if you need someone to pray for you, we have people who can come pray for you. Kim. prayer, especially during the last year or so, when Shirley was going through her problems. And one of her favorite scriptures is Isaiah 41, verse 13. And God laid that on my heart, that during this four weeks, three weeks that I was off, this is the scripture that I want you to preach out of. Because I was worried. I was fearful. And he's telling me, look, I'm commanding you, do not fear. I'm commanding you, do not be dismayed. So we all need prayer. I don't care how much word you have in you. Is there anyone? Chuck. Shall we bow? Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you again for another opportunity to come before you and give our thanks for all your grace, mercy, and blessings. My Heavenly Father, for each and every family, each and every person under the sound of my voice, my Heavenly Father, we just ask that you intercede on their behalf. Touch them, guide them, heal them, protect them lead their steps, guide their path, and let them know, my Heavenly Father, that as pastor preached this morning, fear is not an option, that through you all things are possible, that you have all control, my Heavenly Father, and that in our lowest of times, in our toughest of times, you're right there beside us, my Heavenly Father, and that that we can take and, and honor and take it to the bank, knowing that you are the God of all gods, my Heavenly Father. Remember those who are sick and shut in, those who wanted to be here today but for whatever reason weren't able to be, those that are watching via the, the uh, social technology that we have. My head thought, again, just touch them, bless them, and give them what they stand in need of. Thank each and every person in this congregation, my Heavenly Father, for their servant leadership in whatever large or small way. And at the end of the day, we'll be sure to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. All these things we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Um, once again, I tell you, I'm just so proud and blessed to be standing up here again in front of each and every one of you. I know uh, that that uh, message was for me. It was more for me than it was for any any of you all. Um, but I pray that it uh, allowed you to have confidence that you know that God, when He gives you a command, He stands by His promises. That He'll be with you in His presence, to protect you, and he'll provide for you. And there's so many other promises that God has for us. Um, I do want to say that um, before we uh, leave. Um, Dietra, because she made so much food down there uh, yesterday, she has uh, what is it? Um, pasta salad, pasta or pasta salad? Yeah. So the pasta that she had, she has a lot of it. 
and she made some cups. So if you want to indulge and have a, a taste test, I'm telling you, it's, it, it's the bomb. The bomb.com, right, Dietra? So she's giving us a taste test. So it'll be in the hospitality room once we leave out of here. And also, um, we have uh, the evangelism and prayer walk today at the service. So we're going to meet um, at the yard behind a Lincoln statue, which is over by Reading Road. So if you want to be a part of this uh, citywide or I don't know if nationwide, I guess citywide um, evangelism and prayer, uh, we're going to meet over by the, um, the uh, statue over on Reading Road. But if we can all stand. And also, I know I see some faces in here. Peace Baptist. I know we're not a lot in here today, but if you see a new face, a face that you don't recognize, please come up and go over to them and introduce yourself to them. Uh, but I see a few people over here, person over here. But yeah, uh, we want to be that contagious Christian community, loving others to Christ. And we thank you for taking this opportunity to come today to, to be with us. But, uh, let's all stand. And once again, thank you for sharing. Thank you, Sharon, for sharing your uh, musical gift with us. Uh, an absence of our minister of music, Maria Bates. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, dear Father, we just thank you once again, Father. We thank you for just your, your presence, your protection and provision, Father. We thank you for being that promise keeper that you always said that you would be, Father. Allow us to leave this place with the confidence that we know that you will never leave us or forsake us, Father, that no matter what, what uh, 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 attacks come our way, that we know that we can put on the armor of God that you gave, that you have given us, and we'll be able to uh, with, withstand any, anything that comes against us, Father. And it's with your grace that comes from your son, Jesus Christ. It's with the love that comes from you, the Father, and with the power that comes from the Holy Spirit, that we give all grace and honor and praise to your son, Jesus. And it's his name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you.